Hey there, angry faithful. I just wanted to drop in, bend your ear a little bit, get your attention. So if you're not listening, drop what you're doing and pay attention to me because I'm here to inform you that not only can you get your daily, maybe if you're binging it, I'm not sure, that's entirely up to you, but you can multiply your doses of angry me fuckery by paying attention to all of the platforms upon which you can find either the dulcet tones of my voice and David's voice or my pretty face and David's not so pretty face. Anyways, digressing. We, not only on we are on YouTube, we are on Spotify, we're on Rumble, we're on Google, Apple Podcast. We have a TikTok page. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Facebook. So if you find yourself fuckery deprived curl up with a nice hot mug of shut the fuck up and just listen open those ear holes and be prepared to be cream pied like it's the first time thanks for listening Welcome to What the Hell. Today we have another special guest. We saw each other last year. You did a, I did an interview with you. It was only like 15 minutes, but now I got you for a little bit longer. Uh, Andy Hane, who's a cosplayer, and honestly, go to his uh, Instagram. What's your Instagram handle? It's uh, venomous underscore cosplay. On yes. Uh, uh, go to, he, he does a, t I don't know if you can call it a tutorial, but you do the uh, uh, basic, uh, uh, where step by step how you do it and everything like that and i i was talking to a person that uh i was showing her pictures of some of your stuff she's like i can't do that that's fucking amazing i mean check out his stuff it's just super intense and the detail on it is just amazing and you're going to uh is it wizard con and osa uh Oklahoma? Uh, going to the Oklahoma City Horror Con um, okay. next weekend, actually. Next, i got to be up there next Friday. And, and the you got called Saturday. to go to that. They messaged me. A, a cosplayer I guested with here in February um, me, reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in being a guest. Oh, that's that's awesome. Let me, let me see. There we go. Let's see if that works a little bit better. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. It, okay. These, these mics I got... They're really stupid cheap, but the problem with them is, is you have to, it took me probably around a year and a half to figure out why I was sounding good on one end and bad on the other. And it's the wording and lettering on it. That's where the actual mic is. And that's where I had to find, it oh. was stupid, ridiculous. And I was like, why is this? Oh, I'm just, I'm just a moron. I don't know things, <laughs> but, uh. What got you into uh, doing cosplay? So it's really kind of completely random. I've always been more of a dive-in head-first kind of guy. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm active duty military, so I was deployed, and we had some time to kill, and I'm just surfing around on... Uh, I'm a big fanatic for the old-school Predator movies, so like I'm just beyond excited for Prey oh, coming you, out. So did you, uh, did you do a, uh, a cosplay of Jean-Claude Van Damme's Predator? I did not. I did the original. Um, the, no, that's not John Claude Van Damme. Was technically the original. I did the Stan Winston. Okay. Okay. Actually, I didn't even do that. I did one of the Super Predators from the third movie with Adrian Bro Brody. Okay. Uh, but looking around, they had this forum for fans of the creature, and people were making the suits. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I want to get one. And they were four thousand, five thousand dollars. Yeah. The, the, uh, uh, Matt ended up buying one. Uh, Matt Best from uh, Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah, and he's like, I had to explain this credit card information for my uh, my wife because I don't know if she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna hate me after I. It was six thousand dollars. And the ones that are normally that price, following a lot of the artists, they are as close as to the actual ones off the screen you're gonna get. They're fantastic. But I was just kind of thinking, I can't afford this. But I saw people selling pieces here and there, and people post tutorials on there. On this forum, so I'm like, all right, let me try. And I, that was my very first cosplay, was a Predator. And I just had a lot of fun building it. And then the responses I got when I did the creation, I was like, okay, well, that was really cool. That was really fun. Let me try another character. And I, I backtracked and then went with, like, Deathstroke and started working my way up to, like, Venom and, and 
now I'm not even buying. Pro- I don't buy hardly ever, ever at all. I try and I want to attempt to make a lot of it myself. Yeah, and it's very doing stuff like that. Uh, any any hobby or anything like that's very therapeutic. I mean, this was originally a hobby that I wanted to turn into a business, but I was like, eh. But I have fun just conversating with people, uh, have, uh, hearing out their stories and everything. Uh, I'm gonna have a guy like on Tuesday that he was best friends with a serial killer. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. And I had a serial killer pause. I was like, oh, we're, we're doing this. It's like, <laughs> I, will, I will do anything you ask. Well, almost. No, I'll do anything you ask. And uh, he ended up, he was like, he's a totally cold guy. I do uh, comedy with him. And uh, he goes up. He's like, yeah. I thought what he said at the time is he knew a guy that was friends with a serial killer. I was like, oh, okay. I'll have you on anyways. This is a really good story. Then, he, then we talked last night. Because we were getting together, I had to uh, deliver a, a mic to a one-armed man. Uh, he had to have like a wireless mic, and he couldn't get the funding, and he couldn't figure out how to order one. It, and he goes up, and he's like, "No, I was friends with him. He was an MMA fighter." I was like, "Oh, oh!" And he told me a little bit of the story and everything, but. It's just the interesting stories. I mean, you with your cosplay and how much, I mean, just detail. Uh, I mean, uh, you were, uh, when we met up at that one, uh, the Wichita Falls Con. Yep. uh, It was, you were Azrael. Uh, Yeah, it was a version of Azrael called St. Batman. But we, I had a friend of mine when I was in Georgia taught me how to do metal work. So the armor I wore for that, I wear for that one because I just wore it in Lubbock actually this year. Is actual metal. It's shaped aluminum and bronze with real chain mail, uh, full leather strapping, and everything. Okay. Now, on something like that, I mean, we're in Texas. We're going into like 114 degree weather. How do you how do you stay cool in those things, or you just you deal with it? Currently, I kind of just deal with it. I've been finding more stuff. Uh, you can get some cooling vests, but it just depends on how much money you're willing to spend. Because a good cooling vest is going to run you about four or five hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, I've been finding uh, mini fans. Uh, I've never seen them before, but I've seen them popping up on Amazon. You can clip onto your waist. So yeah, I've certain seen. Ones, I think I've be- seen. I was like a couple of people at Walmart that had those like uh, around their neck cooling fans and everything like that. And I, I played paintball for a while, and they had those cooling fans for the the mask and everything. It's supposed to uh, get rid of the fog in the uh, mask, which it doesn't work, but it those things i mean i've i've seen like uh the behind the scenes type stuff for a lot of the movies that the they have like uh it almost looks like a dog nipple type <laughs> run on the back where they hook up uh water lines uh to go through the suit and they say it's still hot i'm like man thank god i'm not gonna do those things because i would i would just I'm used to this type of heat. I've been to desert, uh, desert type environments and everything, and I've been to like uh, more uh, human environments too. Just that kind of heat and everything, no matter what it is, and wear because I was wearing like tack vest and stuff like that, and it's on. Bearable just with that small, and I'm talking to probably around about 40 pounds extra. I'm not like a lot of uh, like uh, when you're going around and kicking doors in, like they're wearing like 80 to 100 pounds. Yeah, and I was like, no, no, we're we're good on just just a small amount. <laughs> but that's a plus side with a lot of these; they don't tend to weigh more. The Predator was my heaviest costume mm-hmm. so far, but yeah, they they do get crazy hot like uh, when i do the batman who laughs i've got a full trench coat that goes down to my ankles boots black jeans and then i've got a latex cowl over over my face with a silicone prosthetic on my on my mouth and then a full metal visor over my eyes i seen one cosplayer uh he was all geared up and everything uh and he passed out in his uh uh, big armor. I think he was doing a 40k armor. Those are intense. Yeah, and he literally passed out, and the people were like gathering around really fast and everything like that. But it's I, I just it's just uh, it's dedication, and that's what what I really like. I mean, 
Uh, I had a print person is like i could never do that because it, it was just uncomfortable i was like dude the amount of dedication is far above you so yeah i can understand that you're kind of a wuss it, it is a lot of dedication one thing i've learned over the years um attempting to do some of those full armor cosplays especially because you're going to run into issues where something might break a, um adhesive comes loose anything along those lines you want uh in the cosplay community they refer to as a handler yeah. So and that's just someone who's just going to help take care of you. Um, if you have issues, they're going to help you pick it up. They're going to help you suit up. They're going to make sure you're drinking water. You know, they'll, they'll funnel the straw through through the mask or the helmet or whatever you Yeah, it, it's literally a team effort sometimes with that stuff. I mean, 100%. It, it's, I, I, I just, I still wonder is like, how, how do you get like, you're burning like uh, uh, calories and everything at a fast rate with those things. Because I've, uh, no matter what kind of uh, stuff you deal with, you're dealing with a lot of weight, your movement, and everything like that, and you're stopping, and you have to do all that stuff and everything. And uh, filling those carbohydrates back up, or calories back up to where you don't, like, like pass out, it, it's just intense. I mean, it's, it's a lot of people don't understand that there's a – almost a, a workout just to do that and you have it, it's 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 a weird training that you have to do that i mean how many times do you have to like walk around before you go to the con to get used to that kind of suit a lot of times for me i'll, I'll try and do a test fit walk around jump around try to bend down and see what's going to pop off break off or anything along those lines and even in the cons you're still going to run into surprises people bumping into you yeah. um but it does. So you don't have you don't have a football player coming in and trying to tackle you. Like, <laughs> Not quite. While you're trying to plan up for it. I mean, you got to plan. You do. Yeah. You, you definitely do. I mean, I'm, I might have something not not quite football player size, but I got an eight year old living with me now. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a good test of, of the durability of some of these costumes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but uh, so what? Uh, what basically? When when you actually started and everything like that, what what areas did you have to look for to uh, find the equipment for uh, for your hobby? Um, Harbor Freight is surprisingly a big big help. It's got a lot of stuff that that are easy to use and it's cost effective, especially when you were first getting started. Um, the first struggle I ran into was finding what they call EVA foam. It really wasn't something you found in any stores, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, or anything like that. And this was. Ten, uh, oh god 11 years ago when I started so I would use foam mats and have to just kind of improvise and figure out you know how can I shape this to where the ridges aren't there where now you, you find the thermoplastic and Michaels and Hobby Lobby has their own brand EVA foam uh, they have their own each one has their own brands SKS props makes their own there's another one on Amazon that's specific so it's, it's a lot easier to find the material now than what it was 10 years ago yeah doing doing LARPing uh like in the early 2000s was like that i mean you get foam noodles you get you get like you're just basically shopping in the uh uh swimming pool aisle and you're waiting for summer because they don't get the stuff until summer and then nerf started getting like the swords and everything like that and they were like oh now we're cool <laughs> yeah pretty much and it's funny too the looks you get when you get some of the more obscene or you go to a hardware store and you're trying to get stuff for something rigid and they're like oh what what kind of project are you doing well you see what it is and you tell them and they sit there and they stare at you and they're like what what so confused but then amazed when you explain the process of the thought pattern behind it and it's some of the most random things you find out like if you look at some of the behind the scenes fun thing that a lot of people don't know the best reference i give is the original alien movies uh alien and james cameron aliens the lips for the aliens, when they shoot, you get the close-up, the lips parting before he opens his mouth, they actually use condoms to make those lips. They would just cut oh, the edges yeah. of them or okay. cut the tops of them off, and it would have that have that effect. Okay. So you well, need, it's like the original lightsabers. That was just basically camera equipment. Yeah. You use you learn to improvise, and it really does take a lot of imagination for it as well. You can look at something, say, like a bottle of water, or um, like a, a container for protein. Like I have a project in, in mind. I'm not going to give away what it is. It's going to be one of my biggest ones to date. But I looked at a con an empty container of whey protein. And I was like, I could use that for the drum for the gun, for the the rotary for the Gatling gun, 
for this project. Yeah. So I've got it like stashed away in my workshop where someone sees trash for some some things. The cosplayers can look at it and be like, actually. Well, it's like uh, I watched this thing uh, about like little potion files and everything like that because the, uh, they were doing like a D and D motif for their room and everything, and they just grabbed old uh, pill bottles and everything like that, and they ended up making them. I mean, it was just intense to, to the point to where uh, it looked so old and real, and I handled it. I was like, oh, this is a magic... This is ibuprofen, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it just takes that... It takes creati- It takes that, uh, that imagination, but it takes a lot of patience. Yes. I learned a ton of patience doing this for as long as I've been doing it. Yeah, it, uh, it was like me doing writing for uh, a couple of skits and uh, my comedy routine. And I have to have it to where no one's around because it looks like I'm frantically. Because I'm thinking about stuff and I'm like moving around and everything like that. And that's my process. And some people's process is basically sit down, write it up and like, okay. Me, it's totally different. I'm like a shark and I, I get these ideas and I'm right, writing them down and typing them out, writing them down. And I'm like, yeah, this would be good. And I just start getting energized from the whole process and everything like that. And it's it's really ridiculous because I look like a madman when I'm making like a 30 minute skit or or a five minute skit or something like that. You get excited, especially if it's something you're passionate about. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've had that uh, many times. I'll be looking at something or someone's talking to me about something, and it'll click, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, I have an idea, I have an idea. And I have a couple people who maybe they just met me or something like that. They're looking at me like I'm insane. Or the people who know me, you know, my my family, my girlfriend, they look at me and they're like, okay, what kind of monster, what character are you making? And they're like, hear me out. And then I'll explain it. They're like, okay. Oh, so she doesn't stand by. And your, your little lovely girlfriend is over here oh, yeah. with us. And uh, so she doesn't stand by with a drink gun anymore? No, she She's knew what she was, she knew what she was getting into because... Uh, I actually shared that stuff like right away. I, I kind of put my weirdness out in the open. They, I and I hate to say it, like I I keep on thinking it's like for like a child showing off the room because every time I go to a, a new person's house, the child is like, "You want to see my room? You want to see my stuff?" And that's basically it. You don't grow out of that. That's what's really funny. As like as like me, I ha- I have a passion. I started getting more more uh, into guns and everything like that, and I get like. Uh, cooler guns and everything and everybody's like uh dude uh this is nice but uh, but i get some people that are like oh dude that's really nice that's really interesting but i was like dude you gotta see this thing it's really cool we're gonna, we're gonna go out to the range like five minutes from now we're gonna I have to show you it off and everything like that i mean it, 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 and it's almost anything i mean even even with this podcast and everything i was like oh dude you can't believe and and I get it to where because I was talking to uh, Ross Patterson from Drinking Bros, and he was doing uh, he he's like, I was like, hey, I know you don't like uh, people talking. He's like, hey, I have a podcast and everything like that. He's like, yeah, and then you got a podcast. He's like, yes, but I had this interesting talk, and and I I explained myself and beforehand the reason why I wanted to talk about it. And he's like, oh, that actually is interesting how you do. I'm I'm glad you do it that way because usually it's. It's, oh, you have to check out my podcast. But I was like, no, I'll tell you the whole story so you don't have to watch it. He's like, that's bad management. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll t- I will tell you the whole, I was like, uh, I was like last night I was talking about uh, the sports show and how, because we have a thing on the sports show that uh, he gets his kid to say a joke of the day. And, a uh, joke of the uh, for the episode at the end, and uh, he he comes up the he's he's like going on twelve, and he ends up saying the most raunchy stuff, <laughs> and and he bar- he's like I can't believe he did that joke, and I you you halfway see me on camera because I'm laughing my ass off, <laughs> almost dying, uh, uh, just watching him do this stuff, and it's freaking hilarious, and. It, it's just one of those things, and I tell the joke and everything. It's like, and, and, and my friends are like, 
Well, I'll watch it. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't have to watch the tattoo. I'll tell you the thing. You're going to have to watch the whole thing to get to the end. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to just be entertained. <laughs> and that, and, that, and that's me being the uh, comic entertainment part and the storyteller. I just, I just, it's just one of those things. You just want to go out and just show your stuff up and you get really excited. Yep. A lot of people that have these hobbies and everything like that, even stupid, ridiculous hobbies, to the point where... <laughs> A person like and and I try I try to put myself into this mental uh, blocking to where be entertained even with the mundane stuff because that other per- you're you're gonna destroy that person's life if the, you just go well that's a piece of shit I know people like that and I freaking hate it it's it to me it's almost like bullying to the point where I'm like hey show me your stuff this is interesting okay. Why, why are you passionate about that? I ask questions, and it yeah. gets them feeling that they actually feel good. I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to anybody about any kind of passion they have, unless it's like one of those weird ones that you can uh, basically solve with the metric system, like, you know, 9 millimeter or something like that. <laughs> I don't – but I, 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 had, I had a person who was telling me, because he, he loves talking with weird people, and uh, he's like, dude – this guy has like a collection of mold. I was like, "That's not, that's not." Ri-. I was like, "No, it's true." And I talked to this guy. I didn't have him on the show or anything like that. And this was like way before I had the podcast. And he has like a collection of molds, and he can tell you every detail of these molds. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 it's it, uh, he's he, uh, I forget the terminology of it. It's like mold and fungus uh, hobby. And it, it's a weird hobby, and they just, they're really intense, and they can tell, it, it's one of those things is if you find out, I was like, hey, I got this mold in the house, how do you take care of it? And he, he'll tell you in detail, it's like, hey, you can't do what a lot of people t- uh, tell you on this way, you got to do it this way. Oh, yeah. It, it's surprisingly more beneficial knowing that mold guy, because, you know, you, everybody doesn't want mold in their house. Hey, I mean, you get black mold and everything. He'll tell you how to, like, hey, get these chemicals right here, and it'll get rid of it th- uh, really good this way. I was like a uh, bug person. Yep. I mean, it, it, weird hobbies and everything like that. Now, when you're doing cons and everything, and I know that, and I know they have, like, the Dallas uh, con, uh, the fandom con and yep, everything like that. the Fan that. Expo. We were there this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, last two years I've been. The the deal with that is they put it in bold uh, text before you even show up. It's like, hey, there's going to be a lot of cosplayers. Be respectful and everything like that. How many how many people do you get when you're at the con that are disrespectful? Because I've been hearing like stories like everybody's good and respectful, but have you have you had like that one person you like? I I believe this thing can cause damage. Let's do it. Oh, yeah, you you always run into it. One thing that's been nice, like with the con, is I don't run into a lot of a, a lot of those just assholes, for lack of better terms. You female, the females get it a lot more, unfortunately, for for women. The cosplay community can be a lot more toxic than it is for, but it can be for males too. Yeah, because uh, you'll get like with followership on social media or something like that. They're like, well, you know, that's great, but I'd rather go look at this this girl. But you flip that around, and I'm not, I don't have to worry about somebody groping at me compared to a lot of the female cosplayers. Yeah, whenever I got, I was like, whenever I, uh, I did the con circuit and I was uh, going out and visiting with people, uh, going, going to those uh, uh, cons, uh, I never even touched a woman. The, to the fact is, like, I always did a thumbs up, and, and I, had, I had a couple of, because I loved their outfit and everything like that, and I thought it was really well done. And I had, they were like, thank you. I'm like, for what? For being respectful. Because we get, like, groped and everything like that. I mean, there was, there was this one chick. She was like, I, I was doing that. And she just, like, grabbed a hold of me. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those, you know, uh, buttercup cupcakes that, you know, women's this and you shouldn't do this. I'm like, no. I'm not going to be that kind of person because I don't know if there's a big beefy guy over there that's going to, you know, take me out and he doesn't have to be in the same zip code to do it. And I'm just like, 
I'll respect your boundaries, you just respect mine. And she just got up and she's like hugging on, on me and everything like that. And, and the photo, the photo, and I, I gotta find it again. It's just, you look at me, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm in my 30s when when this happened. And and uh, the person that took the photo with me, he's like, dude, I've never seen you that awkward. I was like, yeah, I get that way sometimes. I've gotten people who, uh, like with a spawn or something, I've got a cape on, they'll step on a cape. Most part, you know, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I've had some people, it was in Dallas, so I cried there was, someone was like, they stepped on the cape, or they were butting into me, and I was like, hey, you know, excuse me, and they're, they would just kind of stare at me. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to start playing that way. You know, if I'm by myself and I've got a large prop and someone wants to be that way, I'll, I'll swing the prop to get out of my way. But, like, this last time around, so I had uh, my girlfriend with me, and this was the first time I got to see this. She was serving as basically a bouncer, and she is aggressive. <laughs> I mean, she is just aggressively like, excuse you need me, get, you need to wide. Get, you, need, you need to get her a shield, too. So, yeah, and she's just, she don't need a shield. She's Puerto Rican. She, she's got that natural, like, look, you're either going to be respectful, or I'm going to teach it to you the hard way. And the only other one I've really had was. You need to videotape that. <laughs> Just put it on your. your I, sh- I should have had like, like a GoPro or something for the. One yes, else. exactly. The the view, um, when I first got into it with Predator, and that was the, that was the, hands down the absolute hottest costume I ever did because I mean that is head to toe latex. Oh, the head weighs ugh. probably a, the head itself weighed probably about five pounds. Yeah. So I took the head off, I took the gloves off, and I'm stopping to get a drink of water or something like that, and I had this person walk up to me and they go, "Put the head on." And I just lost, and I was when I first started cosplaying, and I just flipped them off. And I was like, yeah, first off, you're not going to come at me like that. Don't, no. But uh, his friend said to me, he's like, I apologize. My friend's an idiot. We were wondering if we could take costume. And I, you know, I explained to him, like, dude, I'm, I'm taking a break. I'm dying. I'm, I'm a heat exhaustion. You know, I'm dehydrated. They're like, we get it. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, but for the most part, you know, when I get people come up and they want to take costume or pictures or something like that, like you said, you get, you get some females who... They're they're so excited. They're you know I won't put my arms around a female unless they do it to me. Yeah. As soon as like I feel the arm go around, I'm like, all right, we're doing those kind of pictures, and I'm fine with that. That doesn't bother me. Um, of course, I also had the same thing done with Kevin Smith too. We we're taking the photo, and I was just uh, I was doing the same thing. Uh, I was just like you know, I just, and he just grabs me. I was like, okay, it's gonna be one of those. I'm not really <laughs> gay, but. You know, you can it. Yeah, Maybe exactly. it happened. It, 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 you know, I'll, I'll do it. You get that moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it, it's 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 just really weird uh, on certain situations like that. I mean, Lou Ferrigno is going to be up there at, at, at the OKC HorrorCon. I'm I, I'm going to take a picture with the Hulk, and that's definitely one. I mean, if that man is like gives me a hug, I'm I would be excited. Uh, also frightened. Uh, you know the uh, manager that was. Uh, doing the con here, mm-hmm. he was talking about Lou Ferrigno. Be careful with that one, because he's he seems nice, but for some ungodly reason, he was talking. He's like, man, and, and this is like a lot of the people that do the con and everything, but they're not like the celebrities. They do the charity work and everything like that, which yeah. I want. Th- those are the people I actually wanted to talk to. Uh, but there was a, each and every one of them said like something horrible about Lou Ferrigno. So just be prepared. Really? Well, be be expected to where he was like, oh, no, you still have to pay me and everything like that. Of course. It's one of those business-type deals and everything. I understand that. But from what uh, they were saying, it's like he is just uh, intense. And it's really it's really one of those things. And I was like, oh, really? Uh, I, I'm, but I've, I've had, like, good experience with celebrities and there's – Bad experiences with celebrities. And, and do you get a lot of celebrities that want to take pictures with you in, in the costume? So that one's one. Um, it was uh, last year and then this year. So last year, a friend, I was with a friend of mine, and he wanted to do uh, photos with Donnie Basco. So I was waiting in line with him. I'm dressed up as Carnage. And he sees me. He's like, oh, who's that? Come, come here, come here, come here. I was like, well, no, I didn't pay for the photo. He's like, I don't care. Come on. You're getting in the photo. Okay. So... Donnie Basco got excited. Uh, this year, uh, my friend paid to do the photo op with Gina Carino. Mm-hmm. And there's a little walking area and all that. And I'm like, I'm not going to walk over there or act like I'm a part of it. I'm going to stand back and you know, let him do that. He paid good money for that photo. She's in mid-conversation with a guest, and I'm dressed up as Ghost Rider standing in the corner. And she looks up, and she stops. She goes, 
Whoa, what is that? What is that? Look at this. That is so cool. And you see people poking around, and one of her crews pokes around and goes, holy shit. And everyone's getting super excited. And my buddy gets up, and I see her before the photo. He ta- he points at me. She points at me and goes, did you see that? And I see him nod, and I was like, what was she saying? He she was asking me, he said, she was asking me, did you see that thing? That thing is so cool. I don't know what's happening, but I love it. And I, and she told him, his response was, yeah, it's a buddy of mine. Oh, my God, that's awesome. And it was just really, it's really funny to see when the celebrities just stop and they're like, whoa, that is so cool. Um, yeah. And it's, she's, a, she's, from what I gather from other people and everything, she's a sweetheart. She uh, She's from Texas, uh, Dallas, Texas. Okay. And from what, a lot of people say they uh from the people that i uh, i know from uh that area that they're, they're like oh yeah i met gina Carano. she's so sweet so nice she she's a good conversationalist but so she, she's, she's very shy at times and i'm like how she could like take care of everybody oh yeah if if need be well, except for me because i don't think she can run that fast <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh and then uh, the most recent one, I, I can't think of his last name. His name was his first name is Johnny, but he's the the actor who played uh, Michelangelo in the original Ninja Turtle movies, in the first and the second one, Secret of the Ooze. God, I'm blanking out. Johnny, Johnny Wong? Wong. Johnny Wong. Okay. And he was a super nice guy. We were just walking around the con because we were a guest there, and he was standing there talking. And he was like, I have to find you. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in this costume tomorrow, you know, with these big wings. And he's like, I have to get a picture. And sure enough, as he's walking by, he sees me and he, he sees, walks by my booth when he's walking with the other guys in the Ninja Turtle costumes. He goes, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. He wants to take a picture with me. And, you know, I send him a picture. He's like, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I've had voice actors for, like, the Dragon Ball actors. I walk by. No, oh, the one stop. recently? Uh, in February, actually. I, wasn't, oh, okay. I didn't go to the most recent one. But uh, yeah, back in February. I'm glad that you didn't. It's at the old uh, old Navy place, and it's re- it was really compact with your gear and everything like that. I would be like, man, I'm surprised because your your stuff is like huge. And I was a guest when I'm um, uh, up at the psych center, and it, it is it is compact. But they made they made it work for what the space did, and from the photos I saw, they improved with like areas for the cosplay contests and stuff like that. Uh, I know um, they're having another show in December, mm. uh, is that, and I'm, uh, I believe I'm, I might be guesting at that one as well. Okay. But yeah, I have uh, I have them stop a lot of voice actors stuff like that. They'll stop me and they'll or they'll see me. They're like, "Whoa, that's so cool! It's, it's really neat." Even if they don't want to take a picture, to have that pe- those people stop and just kind of that wow moment. Yeah, and uh, another thing is because uh, last. When we both talked, you had your dad on with you and everything yep. like that. And it's and it's also really amazing. Your dad supports. Does he do uh, a little bit of cosplay too, or he has cosplay with me a couple times? Uh, that one last year, he was rocking my Gunslinger Spawn cosplay. Okay, yeah. And uh, we went to when Dallas was doing two. We went to one in October, and I spun up a uh, a, a scarecrow a dark, uh, ver- uh, for him real quick with a mask that he had, and found something cheap. And I did a Joker, and that was his first time cosplaying with me. He was like, this is really different, but it's, it's really fun. So yeah. he, he's definitely not opposed to it. He's We're waiting for temperature-wise, and then with his work schedule, he's actually going to be uh, do- joining me for a photo shoot when I do the King of Hell Ghost Rider, and I'm going to dress him up as the Demon Lord Mephisto so I can have him for, uh, for the photo shoot. He's going to be red, crazy wig, pointy ears, He's going to let me wrap him up in a chain to make it look like I'm dragging him on a motorcycle. And I can't wait to see that because I want to see how you do it. Because there, there, there's a lot of uh, different styles of my pisto and everything like that. And, I mean, you could do so many. And I'm just going through the catalog in my head as you're saying it. I'm like, yeah, no. I, I, I can see that one, but I can see that one. I mean, they you have the, uh, I mean, you can do the, like, uh, business red suit one oh, we're gonna have him just do kind of more of that business one not even a red suit because then uh during the king of hell series he was running a running a casino and he just yeah. has like a normal suit but he's still got the crazy ass hair and the, yeah and the big and the pointy ears and stuff like that and then my photographer's dad is apparently a huge ghostwriter fan he reached out to me and he's got a black chopper he's gonna let us use for the photo shoot oh dude that would 
badass. I mean, if you can do the uh, Photoshop and everything, you can do the flames and everything. Yep. God, that would be awesome. And, and I thought that was really cool to have his dad reach out to me and be like, hey, I saw pictures of your Ghost Rider. You know, I, I've done it before. My wife has done it. They, they motorcycle and they, uh, they've done rides in full cosplay. They're like, I've got this one. It's the closest to Johnny Blaze's original bike that I have. If you want to use it when you do your photo shoot for Johnny Blaze, let me know. It's and I'll we'll have it up. That's there. fucking. I, that's another thing I, I I really love about like uh, con people, uh, convention, uh, comic book convention. I don't want to say con man, but uh, they 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 support each other oh, so yeah. well. And it, it, it's basically like uh, me and your tribe, the military. I mean. If it comes uh, in your squadron or something like that, they got your back. I mean, I always had it, had that, and it was instilled in me with uh, my dad. Uh, and it's one of those things. And then you see that. It's like, oh, I could probably be part of this because it, 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 it's an easier transition. And that that's one thing I love about that is, is basically it's like everybody's helping each other out. I mean, I've seen uh, a lot of the... Uh, like comments on some cosplayer and they'll reach out it's like hey i'm having trouble with this and you have like a laundry list of like not like bullying oh you got to do it this way it's like no i found out it's easier to do it this way yep. i found out it's easier to do this way have you tried this have you tried that i mean it's it's like a surplus now since you have we have like social media it's one of the good things about social media, even though I try to bash it constantly because of all the uh, bullshit that's on it half the time. Oh, yeah. But it, 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 the, the, the support that you have in that situation is just phenomenal. And I try to be that same way because I had a lot of people, you know, from the uh, Building the Predator costume, people were helping me out and recommending, hey, you got to do this, you know, to make sure this sticks, buy this product, buy this product. And I found it's even the same in, like, the FX community, the special effects community. Oh, yeah. Um, having an opportunity to go to Monster Palooza and talk to some of the artists, I got an opportunity to, to meet and chat with V Neal. Oh, dude! And uh, super, super sweet lady, uh, the owner of Immortal Mask. Uh, he was on Face Off, and he was one of the winners. I talked to him. He evaluated my sculpts. He's like, "Hey, you need to try and do this a little bit. You're going a little too thin with them." A B C. So I try to do that, and you do. You get people on, the, especially on social media, because uh, everyone's a keyboard warrior. Yeah. Um. Where they try to bash them, they're like, "Oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that." Or, "Oh, you're too fat. You're too skinny." That's what I always tell people who come and they ask me questions. I'm like, "That is, have fun with it. You know, you're gonna have people who are just gonna give you give you grief, but be proud of what you're doing. If you're yeah. if you're having fun with it and you're proud of your art and you work or you rock it with that pride, you'll be surprised at the kind of response you'll get." Yeah, and it it's just uh, uh, how much. How much are you, like, spending on this stuff, or are you just, because uh, from what you were saying, you, you found certain things and everything you can use uh, a little bit cheaply, but uh, material costs on some of that stuff. It can rack up when you start running low, but you can get them in such big bulks that it'll last you a long time. Um, so, like, for anything I cast in resin, I have to make a, with my silicone molds. A gallon unit, which will last me a solid year to year and a half, depending on how much I'm sculpting or molding, but that'll run me about $150, 170 dollars for a, uh, for just the one gallon unit. Well, that's actually not bad compared to the price range if you're just buying it from somebody else. Correct, and it's because um, you're because in situations like that, it's it's like when working construction or something like that, you're not buying the material, you're buying the material and the experience. Yep. That's exactly it, because foam won't cost that much. Um, I just bought three rolls of the of the HD uh, SKS HD foam because I've never used it, and fifty bucks for three rolls of foam, and that'll last me for a decent amount. Uh, and that's something I'll tell a lot of people too. I'm like, look, if you want to try and build it yourself to save you some money, let me know, and I'll point you in the direction. I'll send you a link. I'll tell you, hey, go to this store, go to this store, use this material or something like that. But okay. it, it, it can. When you get low on supplies, that's when you can rack up a decent bill. But once you have a nice stockpile, uh, I normally stockpile, and it'll last me a year to a year and a half, uh, to almost two years, and it'll run me. I spend about three to four hundred dollars in supplies. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, how 
do you just do internet or do you get like collect the books and everything of uh, other uh, special effects and because it was like me when I get down to it like uh, like even with, like the soundboard and everything like that I, I go down like a trope of like uh, YouTube tutorials and everything that's another thing that's really good is just the YouTube uh, tutorials nowadays I mean I could fix my car just by going to YouTube but uh, do you still get the books and everything like that so you have like a hard copy just in case I definitely do um, if, of course ever you've got that trove of internet and if you watch a lot of behind the scenes even even though they have the internet you know, they'll print off pictures and they have them all over so I have an actual library of art of books and those books will run. They do get a little pricey, but I'm willing to accept that and accept the uh, potential damage for I it. I think I've seen one just uh, – only because, you know, just curiosity and everything. It's like one book I saw was probably about that thick. It was 150 bucks. Yeah, they run between 50 to to $100 for the ones I find. But you can – if you get the good ones, like um, The Mandalorian Season 1, mm-hmm. they actually had all the concept – pictures of all the concept front and back of The Mandalorian – and then the armor, you get front and back pictures, things that are a little harder to find on the Internet. Um, action figures are actually surprisingly really good reference material, too. I had a friend of mine when I was in the service. Uh, he was a Star Wars geek to, like I was. And he he got the figurines, and he would mold them uh, to, like, a person in the background. He knew every character to the point where... You see that stormtrooper right there? He's blah, 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 blah. And this is his figurine. Oh, wow. He would do, uh, I forget what it's called, uh, the little model. I mean, there, there's actual name for it. I just can't. Uh, claymation. Not claymation. It was like, uh, it, man, it, it's, it's like a scene model. I, I forget the name of it. Dioramas? Dioramas, yes, exactly. He'll do a whole diorama. And he and what's really sad, well, not really sad, but interesting, is he'll have like a list uh, and you could pinpoint of what's that character's name and everything. And you could look at this. He'll tell you, it's like, oh, you can look at this comic for this guy's backstory. I'm like, okay, I'm. Uh, it's at that, that point to where. You go in, it's like, oh, I'm really interested in this stuff. And then you find the person that's more interested in you. How many how many times do you get that? And, and it just surprises you that the wealth of knowledge, it's more than you're expecting. Uh, I've had that a few times. I, I normally catch some people off guard when they start talking to me about certain things. But um, I'm more of the old school anime where, like, with a lot of the anime characters, I have people go into depth or explain it. Um, but comics I've been reading since I was... Jeez, 10 years old, so that's one. I just have a back-and-forth banter than anything. Yeah, and it, it was like, how, how, we'll get to your story, how you got into comics, too, because my my story is is uh, my mom was dyslexic. I, I'm, I'm dyslexic, too, and she didn't, she didn't, grew, she grew up, she graduated high school, and it was in the 70s where they just, you know, they just graduated you. They they were going for numbers, not you know quality of education. Yeah. I mean, they still kind of do that here a little bit, but not as intense like they used to. I mean, she she was a uh, illiterate. She couldn't read. It took her a while to, and it pissed her off. My dad was illiterate, and he would like read books constantly. He was a book nerd, and she would get upset. But she instilled in me the basic fact of. Uh, wanting to read more and she started me off on comics so it was actually a lot of people it's like oh it has to be the the male part i was like no it was my mom because she wanted me to uh, learn to read and it had pictures and i started reading and and some of the i mean a lot of people back then now it's more popular but people back then when i was talking about comics and everything like that and my uh re uh reading level i mean i was i mean some of those uh, comics they had like really stupid big words I had to like mm-hmm. spell out and that's what got me into reading more it was one of those things that my mom didn't want me to uh, grow up like that that's the reason why I become a comic book nerd and, but what, what's your story how did you want to become a big time comic book nerd now 
So I was always just kind of reading. Um, I was big in the Ninja Turtles when I was a kid, just the cartoons. And my uncle introduced me. My uncle and my dad just kind of introduced me and pushed. Uh, he had a, My uncle had a, a big comic book collection when he was a kid. And a lot of them were damaged, stuff like that. I'd be kind of flipping through them. And he's like, well, here, take this one, take this one, take this one. And I just kind of expanded. And then I would see some of the intricate designs for some of these characters. I'm like, oh, that character's really cool. Okay, now I want to learn about them. And I've had some of just the TV shows introduce me to a character. I'm like, I've never heard of that character. I like him. And let me backtrack and see. And then I'll, I'll go back and, and I'll start reading the books about him or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like the cartoons back in the day, you couldn't find anything on Holly Quinn because she was introduced in the uh, cartoon before yep. she was actually introduced in the comics. Yep, and that's a lot of people uh, don't realize that. Um, but, like, the best reference I give, I was introduced to Deathstroke via the Teen Titans cartoon. Slade Wilson, and I yeah. was like, okay, he's this is a really cool character. Yeah. And then when I found out more about him, I'm like, okay, I really like this character. Yeah, and it, it's to the fact that of uh, nowadays, I mean, I mean, when we're about the same age, you're like in your forties, right? Uh, thir- I'll be thirty six in September. God damn, I'm still older. <laughs> <laughs> but back in my day. When we had a truck down and, uh, like, icy cold uphill five miles, uh, it it wasn't, like, popular to be that kind of person that's interested in comics and everything. And I have friends now that I went to high school with. It's like, dude, I was secretly a nerd. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything like that. But And we started talking more, and he's like, man... I wish I knew you back in the day. It was like you did know me kind of back in the day. But it, it's it's super popular now. I mean, you got D&D that's popular now because of Stranger Things. Uh, and, and like Crit Roll. Uh, stuff like that. And now it's super popular. But back in the day, it was like, I almost got stabbed for D&D. You don't have, you don't have the guts to go back in time to do what I, ha- do what I had to deal with. And, and it's so strange nowadays. Yes, it, it is, and you still, but you still run into those people. Who, um, and when I was in Georgia, there wasn't a huge, huge nerd community, and I'm like, that's unusual. Everyone I've been, there, there's not a lot. There was, there was a bigger one, and then I, once I did some digging, I found like people just wouldn't advertise it and sell it. And I'm like, man, you know what? Like, I, I get it. You have, you're trying to impress this girl, or you have the jocks, or anything along those lines. And I've had people look at me. They're like, oh, you read comic books? Aren't those for kids? I'm like, no. Some of those stories are really, really intense that are not child appropriate. Yeah, once you break it like a billion dollars off of a comic book movie, people start paying attention because of the money value into it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, my my thought process has always been, and I caught some grief when I was younger, and eventually, like I when I was in, in elementary through middle school, I, I would have the kids kind of bully me a little bit, but I wouldn't care. I would just shrug it off. So it was right around eighth grade people were finally like you know what like it doesn't bother him he accepts it so why are we giving him grief about it and I, i've always had that mentality i'm like if that's your thing own it don't don't hide it don't be ashamed of what you're pro- of what you enjoy everybody's different everybody has a right to enjoy whatever they want to enjoy and the, joe schmo's opinion really doesn't matter shouldn't affect you yeah and i, I would like to think because of that bullying i, I accept more of other people's uh hobbies and everything like that and some of them might be weird and i was like uh when i was a correctional officer i had this <laughs> I had this thing that i i kept on pissing them off on it because they had a uh, uh the fantasy football they love fantasy football and uh one day they were like uh because i was just learning about it back uh back then this was like 2010 and it, it really became popular because of the league tv show and uh they were talking about their fantasy league. It's like, guys, what are you talking about? Are you all talking about, like, role-playing or something like that? And it was like, no, our fantasy league. Well, I got to get this this quarterback so my team can win. I was like, Dude, y'all, y'all, y'all talking TNT almost. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not talking about that nerd stuff. And then I explained myself. After I explained myself, they were like, no, I think he's kind of right. <laughs> yep. It, it, it was so funny, and then after that, they they because the, the, uh, one year I I ended up just wanting to you know be part of the group type deal. I was like, I'll try it out, 
And uh, when I get into something, I get into something ridiculous. But I can also just not deal with it anymore, yeah. which I do now. And uh, they're like, okay, make your fantasy list. It, it, and it pissed everybody off because I'm a research guy. I love doing research. The reason why I do all this stuff because they're just because – it's out there. You have to still have to look at uh, look at different things, so you actually end up being in the conversation. And uh, I, I love doing that. So I ended up researching all the stuff for my team, and I was picking up people that it was like uh, Moneyball. How, how uh, the A's ended up getting players that just got on base. And to pros, uh, propose to uh, a heavy hitter or this or that. And that's how I did my fantasy team. I was, I was there to get to the end of the finish line. If I didn't get to the finish line, no big deal. I still made some extra money. Uh, and they're like, oh, your team didn't make it to the Super Bowl. And then I showed them verbatim of how many times I won compared to everybody else. He was like, yeah, but you, you, team didn't. It was so sad when he said it afterwards. <laughs> it was like, but your team didn't make. None of your players made it to the Super Bowl, but you still got most of our money. It's like that's what I care about. Yeah, exactly. I still win, so <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah, yeah. The the stripper that I give most of the, the winnings to is still going to college. <laughs> so you. You're still dumbfounded about that. Yeah. <laughs> you should become a doctor because you took a lot of money. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm I'm hungry. How are you? Hun- you hungry? It doesn't matter to me. I mean, because because uh, I offered him a meal, so we're I I try to pay the people that come on the show. That meal is my uh, top of the line t- thing. <laughs> I can't actually give like actual cash, but uh, I'll feed you. I'm good. Uh, with that. Yeah. Uh, so this is the end. Uh, freaking Andy Hene. Hene. Okay. It, it's something super ridiculous. That should be. Uh, where where are you looking and find all your stuff? Uh, you can go on Instagram. Uh, Venomous underscore cosplay. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, Venomous FX and cosplay. And then just recently, due to a big push, uh, I just recently started doing, doing uh, getting on TikTok as well. And that's uh, Venomous you, dot yeah, FX Cosplay. You gotta send me that link so I can take a look at that. Cause I, I, I love. I'm starting. I'll tell you a story after, cause I don't want to get into it right now, cause I'm freaking hungry. Uh, but uh, I, I started like dipping into the TikTok. I was like late in the game, just watching the stuff and everything, cause it's a lot of funny and everything, and I get a lot of my uh, comic stuff from from that. But anyways, uh. Check us out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. It's in the beginning of, of the episode, so you can backtrack to that. And check this guy's stuff out. It's freaking amazing. It really is. I uh, uh, talked to him by chance, and I ended up being like into his stuff every time I uh, go on Instagram, and I'm freaking amazed with all the stuff. And thank you all for listening. We'll get ahead and uh, wrap this up. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, no problem.